Sometimes you won't be able to use the point charge equation for potential. Instead, you'll have an object that has charge spread all over it. In this case, if we want to calculate the potential, we want to think about how all of the small amounts of charge on this object affect potential at a desired point. Each small amount of charge, dq, will be at some variable distance r from our point. So instead of a summation, like we see in the superposition principle, we use an integral. Now the trick in doing this for different systems is coming up with a way to describe dq and r. For dq, it depends on the number of dimensions we're in. Total charge q divided by the length, area, or volume gives you charge density. For a linear distribution, you have charge density lambda for the entire length. For a charge distribution over an area, you have sigma as charge density. For volume, we use rho for density. Using these densities, if we look at infinitely small lengths, areas, and volumes, we can describe the bits of charge dq. For example, the small amount of charge that on a flat disk would be sigma times dA, the small bit of area it occupies. Once you have that, you need to find out how far your point is from every little dq. Often this will be either related to the radius of your circle and or measurable through the Pythagorean theorem. With these broad steps in mind, revisit the examples we gave in lecture. All it takes is identifying your equation for dq and figuring out your equation for r. After that, it's just some incredibly fun calculus and you're done.